the first anime I ever saw any of as a kid was Demon City Shinjuku. I saw the opening sequence of the anime on the Sci-Fi Channel on Saturday mornings. Back when the Sci-Fi Channel was called the Sci-Fi Channel, and they showed anime on Saturday mornings. The opening of the anime was exciting, and the conclusion of that opening with the protagonist's father failing and Shinjuku being transformed into the titular demon city hooked me in. And then my parents all got up, and I had to turn the TV off because my parents didn't like the TV on early in the morning, and also because I was under 13. I wasn't able to watch the film again with it see the whole story until I was in high school, and I was able to get a copy of the film from the library. Since then, I've watched the film a few times, and while I view the film with a degree of nostalgia, I've developed a bit of distance from that original view. So I have a degree of emotional separation from the film, and I can see some of the flaws that I overlooked before. Demon City Shinjuku is a film that makes a lot of assumptions and expects you to just roll with them. There's a global president who has managed to craft a lasting peace agreement in the Middle East. Because why not? He comes to Japan but with his daughter by space shuttle. Because why not? Further, the force responsible for Shinjuku's transformation, the sorcerer Rebi Ra, targets this global president for an attack. In spite of him not planning to launch a spiritual attack on Rebi Ra, and thus not doing anything that would interfere with Rebi Ra's plans if he didn't call attention to himself, because why not? None of those points, among numerous others, are explained. While the film is based on a novel by Hideki Kichi, creator of Vampire Hunter D, the first book is effectively a standalone story. There are later sequels, but this is a book you're expected to go into with no earlier knowledge. It's a story that asks you to take everything at face value, while leaving an undercurrent of mystery underneath anything and everything no promise that the questions asked by those mysteries will be answered. That said, the film is a visual feast. This is one of the films directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who would go on to direct some adaptations of some of Ikuji's other work, and Kawajiri has a profound sense of visual style. His action is incredibly fluid and dynamic without causing the viewer to lose track of the scene. Kawajiri is undoubtedly one of the best directors in action anime, and sword fights in particular, and this film is a great example of why he's earned that reputation. That said, because this film is an OVA, it's a direct video film from the 1990s, it does run into the problem that it feels visually restrained, by which I mean it was made with a 4x3 television aspect ratio in mind. So we get numerous sequences where, as a viewer, I want to see a little more beyond the edge of the screen, but we don't get that. It makes me wish somewhat that this film could have gotten a remake that could have taken advantage of the fact that, hey, everyone has a widescreen TV these days. Let's take advantage of that and make this world visually seem bigger in a way where the picture is framed with that in mind, as opposed to just cropping the top and bottom out of the frame. Also, the film has other problems that adaptations of Kukichi's work have with female characters. Women are generally written as either predators or passive. Even if they're somewhat active characters, they're still weak and vulnerable in the face of larger threats in a way that male characters aren't, and such is the case with this film. With this rewatch, I still like the film, but I can't recommend it without reservation. Demon City Shinjuku isn't as openly hostile as, say, Ninja Scroll, uh, where Ninja Scroll is aggressively rapey in multiple ways. And while there are still some an undercurrent of this sort of violence in the film, it's not as in-your-face about it as Ninja Scroll it. But Demon City Shinjuku is still very harsh and very oppressive, and the way that the film's female lead is written is very eye-rolling. But it's more newbie-friendly than Ninja Scroll it, and I think that is a very strong point in its favor. If you're looking for an old-school gonzo anime to check out, this is a film to go with. Now, as Demon City, Demon City Shinjuku was licensed rescued by Discord Tech Media a few years ago, as of this recording, and is currently available from Right Stuff and Amazon. Right Stuff and Amazon also the novel as well, the physical edition, and Amazon has the Kindle store. Well, for all the links to all of those are in the show notes below. I have not read the book yet, so I can't speak for those. I will say Kokichi 
as an author gets a little more rapey in these books than ends up on screen in, his, in the adaptations of his films. So keep that under advisement. I do intend to read the book at some point in the future, and I'll give my thoughts at that time. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.